A cloud of uncertainty still hangs over the fate of Ibrahim Mago as acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. He is facing a probe panel set up by the president to look into activities of the anti-graft agency and also give Mr. Mago a chance to clear his name. Tivison AU senior correspondent Femi Akonde reports on the latest development. It is the third day in continuation of the probe of activities of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. And for the arrowhead of this agency, Ibrahim Magu, this is a fight for survival. He must prove beyond reasonable doubt that his hands are clean. Contrary to allegations leveled against him by the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malani. The presidency has maintained a curious silence over the fate of a man that was once prominent as the face of President Muhammadu Buhari's anti-corruption campaign. But they insist nobody is above scrutiny, not even Ibrahim Magu. For Ibrahim Magu, a man whose confirmation was rejected twice by the 8th Senate, this may just be another obstacle out of the many hurdles in the path of steering the affairs of the EFCC. Ibrahim Magu is faced with a 24-count allegation brought against him by the Minister of Justice in a letter submitted to Mr. President. The trial of Mr. Magu is happening behind closed doors and journalists are also not allowed near the presidential banquet hall where the pro panel is sitting. The respected retired president of the Court of Appeal, Justice Ayo Salami, now has the arduous task of an unbiased judge in the matter. There has also been a groundswell of misinformation surrounding the arrest and probe of the EFCC chief. The troubles of Ibrahim Magu has sharply divided public opinion and he has remained in the custody of the Force Criminal and Intelligence Department pending the conclusion of the matter. This could also be a litmus test of the credibility of President Muhammadu Buhari's fight against corruption as the foremost anti-graft officer is held to account. Femi Akonde, TVC News, Abuja. Following its establishment in 2003 by the administration of President Olusegun Obasanjo, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has courted some controversies. According to the Act establishing the EFCC, the Commission is mandated to combat financial crimes and prevent it in the country. The Commission is as well charged with the responsibility of enforcing the provisions of the 2004 and 1995 Money Laundering Act, with some of its chairmen accused of breaking these same laws they were saddled to enforce. In this report, TVC News senior political correspondent Ayo Dele Ozugakon looks at the controversies that dogged occupiers of the office of the EFCC chairman have faced. Since the establishment of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, in 2003 by the administration of former Olushe Gwambasanjo, it has had four chairmen. The first was Malam Nuri Badu, who headed the EFCC from 2003 to 2007. Ribadu was succeeded by Farida Waziri, who piloted the affairs of the commission from May 2008 to 23rd of November 2011. Ibrahim Lamode stepped in as the chairman of EFCC on the 23rd of November 2011 to the night of November 2015. Ibrahim Lamode has been replaced by Ibrahim Mago. The incumbent Ibrahim Mago, until his suspension on Tuesday, 7th of July, was appointed acting chairman of EFCC on the night of November 2015. His appointment was never confirmed by the Senate, despite spending nearly five years in the saddle. Those in favor say aye. Those against say nay. The nay is happy. That aberration remains a blight on his tenure as the head of Nigeria's anti corruption agency. It is instructive to note that one thing common to all of them is that controversies trailed either the appointment or performances in office. Recently, I got heaps and heaps and heaps of petitions written against me, and you recall one day I said, could there be another Farida somewhere? Mm -hmm. 
Curiously, they were alleged to have abused the office with some doses of corrupt practices. Ribadu, the pioneer chairman of EFCC, was not only removed from office but demoted from the rank of Assistant Inspector General of Police to Commissioner of Police. He was alleged to have been involved in human rights abuse of suspects, among other things. Based on the recommendation of the First Disciplinary Committee, and at the end of his deliberation, the Commission has dismissed the officer from the force. Farida Waziri, who succeeded him, was allegedly removed from office for falling out with the then Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Mohamed Belu Adoke, over prosecution of cases brought by the Commission. The exit of Lamudi from the Commission was also marred by controversy. He was accused of diverting over 1 trillion naira recovered from the sales of confiscated property belonging to convicted officials, including the late Governor of Bayosa State, DSP Alamesia and a former Inspector General of Police, Tafa Balogun. Out of the four chairmen that have headed the EFCC, the most controversial appears to be the embattled Magu, who was appointed to replace Lamode in 2015. Following the security report on the EFCC chairman, the Senate decided not to confirm the chairman and communicate him to be suppressing. He was twice denied confirmation by the eight Senates on the strength of an indicting memo against him by the Department of State Services, DSS. Mago has spent five years in acting capacity due to his non-confirmation by the Senate. On Monday, the 6th of July, he was dragged before a presidential panel headed by a former president of the Court of Appeal, Justice Ayo Salami. It was learnt that 24 allegations were levelled against Mago from the Office of the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Abaka Malami. Despite this, Pundits point out that the fight against corruption has been most successful under the Rahim Magu led EFCC, with the highest number of convictions secured against fraudsters and politically exposed persons. It is unlikely that Magu survives this onslaught against him, as his suspension might affect his chances of returning to his position or renewal of his tenure by Mr. President.